welcome to the Monday, April 14th, 2014, regular meeting of the Marquette City Commission. If everyone would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I City Clerk, would you please call the roll? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Uh, Commissioner Cambenzi? Here. Commissioner Campana? Here. Commissioner Coyne? Commissioner Reynolds? Here. Commissioner Ryan? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse? Here. And Mayor Nemi? Here. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, Commissioner Coyne did call me this morning. He uh, was uh, out of the city and he tried flying in, had a snafu in his connections and couldn't get a rental car, and so he could not be here this evening. He, he regrets that, but it's unavoidable. What would be the pleasure of the commissioners? Commissioner Ryan? I move Commissioner Coyne be excused for his absence tonight. Okay. Commissioner Reynolds? Second. Thank you. It's been moved by Commissioner Ryan, seconded by Commissioner Reynolds to excuse Commissioner Coyne's absence. All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. The uh, affirmatives have it, six to zero. The next item is a note of agenda changes. Uh, we do have a, uh, a housekeeping item on the agenda. There was a clerical error and the minutes were omitted from the consent agenda. Uh, they need to be added as 6.i, uh, 6 .I. any other changes that any commissioners desire? Hearing none, I guess I would en entertain a motion to approve the agenda with the addition of the minutes. Commissioner Ryan? I would make that motion. Thank you. Commissioner Cambenzi? Support. Thank you. It's been moved by Commissioner Ryan, seconded by Commissioner Cambenzi to approve the agenda with the addition of uh, the minutes as item 6i in the consent agenda. agenda. All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The next item is announcements. Uh, I have a list of boards and commissions. We still have a number of openings. We just uh, kind of keep our nose above water and I'd like uh, to uh, implore people to step up and volunteer for boards and commissions. Certainly that's uh, uh, an integral part of how our city uh, operates. So if you look at the website, you can see a list of the boards and commissions and the number of uh, uh, vacancies and also there's a nice uh, application you can fill out on the website and actually submit it electronically. So it can't get much easier than that. So I would uh, encourage people to do so. Uh, second uh, announcement I have, uh, we have an election coming up in November 2014. There's three seats on the city commission, two seats on the Board of Light and Power. And if you do desire to submit a, a petition to get on the ballot, you have to do that by April 22nd. You can do it either by collecting 25 signatures on a nominating petition or paying $100 at the clerk's office. And the clerk's staff would be certainly willing to help you uh, work through that paperwork. It's, uh, it's quite simple. The last announcement I have is a public service announcement. Uh, a number of people, well, all taxpayers in the city did receive a notice about a, a local development finance authority uh, shortened to LDFA. And uh, a lot of people had questions about what, what exactly it entailed. And the, the notice was sent out to all taxpayers. Uh, for further explanation, uh, the city commission will be conducting a public hearing on Monday, April 28th. That's in, in the chambers here at 7 p.m on the Local Development Finance Authority. During the public hearing, the City Commission will consider expanding the boundaries of the Marquette's uh, current Local Development Finance Authority to encompass the entire city of Marquette. The LDFA was created back in the 90s, I think, for the River Park Complex, and it's kind of gone dormant since then, and we need an LDFA for the smart zone, so we're, we're uh, bringing it back. And and we do have to restate the boundaries. That's why every taxpayer in the city got a notice because it's going to encompass the entire city, not just a small portion of the city. The LDFA is a state recognized mechanism that local units of government can utilize for economic development purposes, such as creating jobs and increasing the tax base. 
the, on April 28th, the Commission will consider expanding the LDFA boundaries to put the city in a better position to obtain special funding opportunities as they rise for economic development purposes and to support the, the uh, smart zone that we're looking at uh, establishing as a satellite zone of the Michigan Tech and the Houghton Hancock smart zone. Uh, taxes and other fees will not be increased as a result of this action. The current city limits on, on tax also will not change as a result of this action. Uh, the money that the LDFA does put to the smart zone will be from the existing uh, taxes. It will not increase anyone's taxes. So I guess that's probably one of the concerns of, of citizens. Uh, that's the extent of the announcements. Uh, the first presentation we have is to the Marquette Royals hockey team. And if the coaches and the players could meet me at the uh, ceremonial lectern. Looks like we've got some hardware too, so that's that's very good. Um, to just give you a little, a little, uh, a little bit about the Marquette Royals. This is the first year that the team's been in Marquette. There, this is their their uh, their starting year. Uh, and uh, if you look at their website, I think uh, there's a little blurb there that says that they're bringing a a competitive hockey team to Marquette, and their goal is to is to finish in first place. Uh, as I was mentioning the coach earlier, I guess if you set a goal and you strive for it, strive for it, you can you can accomplish it because they did accomplish that. It's uh, it's an amazing for a first season team. They were the regular season champions of the Great Lake Great Lakes Division, the Minnesota Junior Hockey League. They're the Bush Cup winners, which is the overall winner. There's two divisions in the Minnesota Junior Hockey League. They played after they won the first the regular season title in their their division. They played the winner of the other division. They beat them. And I think that's what this hardware is, is to. This is called the Bush Cup. And uh, so they, they got the Bush Cup. They also represented the Minnesota Junior Hockey League at the Tier 3 Junior Hockey Nationals in Simsbury, Connecticut, uh, along with one other team from the Minnesota Junior Hockey League. So it's just a, a, it's an amazing feat. And uh, uh, I know I'm proud of them. I, I think our whole community should be proud of them. And this isn't just a city of Marquette thing. This is a, a whole community. In fact, Dennis Lemitar from Marquette Township was planning to be here tonight, but he's uh, under the weather figuratively, not literally. So he's not feeling well, so he didn't make it. But uh, I'll plot along without him. Uh, you want to say anything about the trophy first? Or? I heard you say it. all the words. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is Coach Mike Stanaway. I do have a, a certificate achievement to <laughs> present to you and one to assistant coach Cliff Cook. And uh, if you'd like to say a few words, then we can pass out a, a few of the other certificates. Sure. Um, I just wanted to uh, obviously thank the community. And um, I remember it wasn't long ago that I, I sat right there and uh, was asking for ice time. And, uh, and uh, thankfully, uh, the commission granted our request for a lease. And uh, it, it's been a fantastic season. The support in the community has been been outstanding and uh, it's been an excellent homecoming for me as everybody um, a lot of people know I, I grew up here I'm from here and uh, to be able to have a great group of players to take to the national championship has been fantastic for uh, year number one so thank you very much Cliff would you like to say anything or okay <laughs> okay um, you know I, I guess I it you know, I guess it can't be said often enough that is it's a it's an amazing feat to, for a first year team to to do what you you guys did. Uh, I know I had the the chance to drop the puck on the NASCAR weekend, and I'm 50-50. You lost one game and won another game, but the the rest of the season was much more successful. So I guess I I won't feel too badly. You'd already won the the regular season championship, so I think someone had described it that that the other team was hungrier at the time, and and uh, but I guess you showed them that. Uh, you can step up and do it. So if you would maybe, uh, we can give out these certificates to the players who are here, and then I'll give you the rest of them, and you can give them to the, the, the players who who are okay. Oh, okay. Oh, you're a, a hometown oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> one of the, Dallas is one of the forwards, and uh, the other is a defenseman, uh, uh, Hayden Rodula from, from Marquette, who were on the, the tournament team for the, the I think the Minnesota Juniors. 
division. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Yep. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll get the the rest of the ones out after. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Good. Thank you are Brian Larson. Hi, Brian. Congratulations. Assistantship. And uh, Tyler Thompson. Hi, Tyler. Looks like uh, is that is that from the season or after the season? Yeah, it's from that. Oh, okay. <laughs> such a team. So. I'll give you the, the remainder of these certificates if you can get them to the, the rest of the guys once they get back into town or back sure. to camp or, or whatever. And, <coughs> and uh, hopefully next year you'll, you'll reserve it. You'll, you'll repeat this. You didn't leave much room for improvement, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I guess you set the bar pretty high. But we, oh, we're, yeah. we're proud of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. Next item is a presentation on the Cinder Pond Marina, an update by Community Service Director Carl Zuger. Like I'm queued up here, it needs to switch over to the screens. While we're waiting, I'd just like to say, um, you know, tonight's presentation is really to give the commission an overview as to what we've experienced over the past, well, less than a month, four weeks, um, and um, some of the steps we've taken uh, and our recommendation moving forward. And certainly you all know that this has been an extraordinary winter. Um, and um, it's, I think, touched all the departments in different ways, uh, as well as the commission and the administration. So as soon as we queue this up, we'll get started. There we go. Um, got a handy dandy clicker here. <laughs> the first, the first slide. I'll just go without it. And we tried this, and I don't think this works. The um, the pointer on these screens. It works well on the other screens, but not on our uh, high def system. Um, this is a Cinder Pond Harbor Service Building. Most of you have been down there. I'm sure most of you have gone down and seen the damage. Um, the vast majority of the damage is on the southwest corner and extends uh, on the west side of the building, and extending all the way past the boater's lounge into the mechanical room. Um, these pictures were actually taken the day that we discovered uh, the separation in the blocks. Um, it is a masonry block building. Um, and when, when we initially discovered it, it was a small crack on the southwest corner and then throughout the weekend that extended um, on the south side of the building. As you see on the bottom left hand corner, um, the crack extending behind the utility box and the women's lavatory, um, that is not a, um, that's not a line on the screen, that's actually you can see right through the building. So the building essentially separated fully uh, and it was a lateral crack, crack, almost the full extent of the building. So what we've done to date, uh, once we discovered the failure, uh, we uh, went down and deployed the fire department to evaluate it. The uh, fire chief belt uh, issued a temporary condemnation of the building. Uh, we also uh, g contacted uh, MML's uh, liability and property pool of the failure that day. Uh, we did have an adjuster look at the facility and he ordered all the contents out of the building. So uh, between that Wednesday when we discovered the crack and Friday, the building was completely cleared out. All of the contents is located in, in the uh, Olson Arena. Um, and we, were, we had uh, orders to have everything removed by 5 o'clock Friday. And so uh, Public Works were gracious enough to help us out with that. Um, in terms of 
some of the other things that we've done, uh, we've worked with waterways. Uh, it's the Department of Natural Resources, waterways. It is a grant and aid funded marina. Um, and uh, we discussed with them uh, some of the operational issues that we may be faced with. Uh, we do work or do all of our reservations, our transient reservations through the state reservation system. So we definitely need to make sure that they were understanding of our predicament and the loss of potential services to a transient public. Um, we also talked to them at that time about potential emergency grant funding. And um, at that point, we really didn't know what insurance would cover, what it wouldn't cover, and so we, we definitely wanted to make sure that we would have funds available if, in fact, grant or in fact insurance dollars weren't available. We could supplement it with perhaps emergency grant funds. Waterways have been fantastic throughout the process. They're very understanding of our situation and sympathetic. Um, and they kind of helped us steward um, our process through, and later tonight you all will be considering an emergency grant through, uh, through waterways. And I just make reference that, that that grant is really phase one, and which is demolition and relocation of, of utilities. So just trying to get us to the point where we can um, remediate any public safety issues and start getting the process or getting, putting us in a position um, for temporary facilities uh, that can be located down there. Um, we were also, the timing was such that we were able to include it in the April Senate hearing um, when the city went down and made the, uh, had the hearing um, on all of the weather related damage that has occurred in the city which includes your water, your wastewater lines, your streets um, and you all are well aware of what's, what's out there with that. We were able to include the building portion um, or our buildings uh, along with that report uh, to the Senate. Um, we've also completed capital operational funding and rate studies um, and we had to really look at it from all of these different areas to ensure that um, we had uh, a comprehensive view as to what needed to be done, um, um, you know, in the next three weeks, six weeks, months um, to get the facility operational and that it would be a fair plan. Uh, on April 3rd, we received the structural engineer. That structural engineer was uh, requested through our insurance carrier uh, and the report uh, was favorable that it was in fact uh, frost damage and uh, so um, that was good news and, um, and then we shared uh, a presentation similar to this with the Harbor Advisory Committee um, and I would say that we had probably the, long, or the largest amount of attendees at that, at that meeting. We probably had 60. I, we set up 50 chairs and we had to add 10 more. So I think we, we got good information out to the Harbor Advisory Committee and the public and uh, I think we've uh, started the process of communicating our, our plan. Some of our challenges are first thing and, and this is first and foremost is public safety. That's our number one priority. Make it safe for the public, make it safe for the users. Um, make it safe for the transients and make it safe for staff. Um, and so that's, that was really our first tenant when we started to look at our plans. Facilities determine the short, uh, the, the short and long term needs. Really the short term is getting the building, in a, you know, demolishing the building, getting the utilities set, um, which, which means your water, your electric lines, um, those are the big ones in the fuel monitoring system. And the way it's, the utilities are set up with the building, they actually go into the building. And so um, it makes it a little bit challenging as to what we do with those utilities uh, when we have to uh, bring the building down and then uh, look at reestablishing those through our peer systems. And, and that's the thing as they go through the building out to the peer systems. And so if we're going to continue to provide services to the peers, our utility lines need to be operational. Um, in terms of the operations for the FY 2014 boating season, Really, we needed to look at what we needed to do for the seasonal slip holders, transients, and boat launch, um, how we could um, uh, ensure that they had a quality experience, what, uh, what services did they need, uh, what could we perhaps uh, um, provide in the short run, and things that would be a long-term service. And then other marina services, rate plan and funding plan, we'll talk about that throughout the presentation. In terms of administration, We've worked with our insurance companies, with the regulatory agents, looking at revenues, funding sources, all of the things that you have to do um, in a good plan. And, and we really, uh, I have to give my staff, I have to give public work staff and the administration um, 
a great deal of, of, of uh, I have to say thank you to them because they have done a, a fantastic job in, in supporting this process. This is, uh, is part of our GIS schematic of the building, which shows the utilities. The blue line that you see is the water line. The yellow line that goes into the building is your electric line. The wastewater collection side actually goes to the right of the building, so that's not necessarily an issue. What you don't see here is our fuel line, which doesn't enter the building, but our fuel monitoring system does, and so that will all have to be removed. So this kind of gives you an idea as to, you know, where the utilities lie and, and some of the work that needs to be done. In terms of the funding plan, uh, we'll talk about the insurance coverages and, and certainly, you know, I have to say that these are, uh, the amounts that you see here are, are maximum limit amounts and certainly we have to go through the, the process of bidding the project out, doing the engineering design, doing the bidding and then we in, in submitting. So these are all up to limits. In terms of building replacement, it's 260000 with a $250 deductible, or in, when I say $260,000, it's or uh, value, value replacement cost. Now, that's for a 2,000-square-foot tw cinder block constructed building and masonry building. Loss of rent, $400,000. There's no applicable uh, deductible on that. Extra expense up to $1.025 million with no deductible, and, th and that would be things such as your temporary facilities, um, perhaps some of the expenses that we may have with our um, foundation work, you know, steel pilings, things that may come up as we go towards rebuilding the structure. And then earth move coverage up to two million. And all of that um, in, in terms of those coverage will depend on um, how the insurance company uh, interprets those expenses as to which area they'll go into. Uh, and then you've got the DNI Waterways Grant Program. That's what we're calling an emergency grant, and that's the way it's been teed up tonight to the commission to consider. Uh, it's 79,000, uh, which is a, um, uh, it's a, uh, a grant that does require a 50% match. And what we see on this one, or what we're su suggesting on this one, is, is this is for the expenses that, that perhaps insurance doesn't cover, so that we have a contingency plan to make sure that we're doing things correctly as we move forward and trying to give the commission some options um, as they move forward. We also have a projected marina fund balance. Uh, we were anticipating a $40,000 fund balance this year. Um, some of that may go towards some of the peer restoration that we have to do, um, but we were anticipating some dollars being left over. Uh, and then we've got general fund subsidy, and that's for the remaining expenses after insurance grant and marina fund balance has been expired. So we're trying to do everything we can to not dip into any general fund dollars um, and uh, just be assured of that. We understand. We understand the pressure on the general fund. In terms of the current season operational plan, um, short run, we want to relocate utilities uh, and, dem and uh, demolish the building. Once again, the relocation, it's the electric lines, the water lines, and then the fuel monitoring. We have priced out temporary laboratories, uh, facilities. These are trailers. Um, one would be a six-pod trailer uh, that would have uh, both toilet and shower facilities, and then an ADA trailer specific for all, um, and it's completely compliant with ADA compliance, and it's uh, both uh, toilets and in and, and a shower. Um, we're also looking to establish a, an administrative trailer. This would be what you would typically see on a construction site, um, and it will have our computers, phone lines, um, point of sale. We'll go through that. Uh, we'll also establish our Wi-Fi service uh, to our boaters. Um, we'll also be able to store some of our maintenance items that we use for the green space around uh, the marina. And then um, we will be looking to hire a full-time or our, our, our full staff, which is seven attendants and, and a marina manager. Um, our timelines to accomplish all this is 45 to 60 days. Uh, and we have to say that, you know, that's really dependent upon any delays with permitting, um, bidding, you know, being and making sure that all the resources are available. So if there are materials on back order, that may be an issue and it may draw us out. And so the quicker we can get moving on this, the better. And also contractor availability. Um, but uh, we think that if we can get the bids in place, get them awarded, and get the contractors on board as quickly as possible, we think we can do it in 45 to 60 days. 
So this is really phase one, um, and it's not, I'm sorry, the bottom part of this is somewhat cut off. Um, in terms of the capital, the capital would be on the left side of the spreadsheet, and uh, the subtotal estimated cost is $158,125. That includes your demolition, your electric utility relocation, water utility relocation, and then the fuel monitoring. We did add in 10% for, for engineering and design, and we did put quite a bit in for uh, contingency, just because we don't know what they're going to contend with once they get in underneath that building. And so we wanted to make sure we had plenty of contingency in there um, for that part of the project. Um, the right-hand side of that spreadsheet is your temporary facilities, which is your administrative office, and then your lavatory and showers, is, it should, which is the 89,000 total of 97,600 which falls within our 100,000 um, uh, insurance limit for temporary facilities. Total cost for phase one, what I'm calling phase one, is $255,725. And that does not include a new facility. That is strictly phase one, getting the building down and getting the utilities in a place where we can use them moving forward. Um, this was something that certainly our voters were interested in is, um, how would the project or how would the condition of the building and the loss of the building um, and the project affect the rates? And if you remember last year during the uh, Presque Isle Marina dredging project, we did prorate the rates based on uh, per foot, put per foot per day. Um, and uh, we have uh, crafted a, a, a schedule that does um, prorate uh, per slip, which would be 24 foot, 30 foot, 38 foot, which is the slips that we have in the, in the Cinder Pond Marina. And our thought would, is that we would follow that same progression um, or that same model, if you will, and prorate them per day until opening. Um, we have uh, talked with waterways about that. Once again, they're very sympathetic and they understand. They think that's a local issue, and so the commission could take action on that as they see fit. Target opening date would be June 1, 2014, and uh, that's if we get moving quickly. Um, and we kind of put the disclaimer on there that this is fluid depending upon bidding, permitting, and all the things that we have to say um, with a project like this when we're trying to move it as quickly as possible. Any further adjustments, what we're suggesting is that that would come um, after the project is complete. Uh, but we think that a prorated uh, rate is probably a fair process and a, pr a fair model to, to use. Next steps uh, really is working with the insurance companies to define the scope of work. Um, and most of this will be once we get our bids in, we need to submit, make sure, or, or see what will be covered and what won't be covered. Any shortfalls, we'll have to determine what those are and uh, find our, or work with our contingency plan to pay for those. Um, in terms of operations, this is something that's already moving forward. If you could imagine, we get probably 25 phone calls a day. We've been in front of the Harbor Advisory Committee. We're doing everything we can to communicate uh, where we're at with the information that we have. And, and I can tell you this, is the public has been fantastic and, and very sympathetic and, and understanding with our process. So it's been, um, it's been, um, uh, an interesting process. So communicating with slip holders, communicating with waterways, uh, working with the public as, as I've indicated we've been doing, um, looking at all of our acquisition strategy. And so we've, we've looked at should we buy, should we lease in terms of laboratory facilities, what makes the most sense, what makes the most sense for our insurance carrier, what makes the most sense for the city of Marquette and the public and the user groups that use this facility. Um, Hiring staff, we've already uh, worked on um, hiring staff, made our adjustments uh, with all of our hires, and then uh, looking at our temporary facilities, or our temporary amenities, including our, our, um, our administrative area. One thing that I can say, um, and that's the last bullet point, is um, you know, this is one thing that we're asking the commission to consider is to approve the city manager emergency procurement authority to where uh, we don't have to necessarily go out and do an RFP for this, but more of a competitive bid it, or not competitive bid it, but get bids and keep this moving. If we keep it moving, um, we can meet our deadlines. Um, so we're asking the commission to consider that uh, with work not to exceed 260,000, which is phase one that I've outlined in the previous slides. 
Staff recommendation, demolish the building, relocate utilities, and establish temporary facilities. That's the first thing. Public safety, get our facility up and running from a temporary standpoint. Um, we're asking the commission to weigh the competitive bidding process and proceed with uh, the proposed scope of work that I've outlined on our, that spreadsheet that you saw um, with a not to exceed 260,000 limits, uh, which is of an insurance claim and a, and a grant proceeds. So looking at those two, see where we can be and, um, and, and move forward with it as quickly as possible. Prorate the seasonal slip rates per day with an adjustment being determined upon opening, similar to what we did in the Presque Isle Marina last year during the dredging project. So this is a similar model that we, that we used last year during this, com this process. The other thing that I would tell you is that we do have within our insurance is, is we do have, um, as part of the policy, is, is we do have um, rental uh, relief. And so if we do, we can, we can claim that. And so we think that's, that's, um, that's a good decision to move in that direction. Submit the MDNR waterways grant. That's something that you're all going to consider tonight for $79,100. And this is the emergency grant, which would be available uh, for those parts of the project that would not perhaps be eligible for in, in an insurance claim. Um, and then uh, work really hard towards a June 1, 2014 opening. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that we talked about is, is that really, really that's phase one, and then we need to immediately switch gears and talk about rebuilding this facility. And so um, trying to get an architect and engineer on board, um, looking at what the needs are, programming of the building, um, what's going to be covered under insurance and uh, what other needs might be out there, other uses might be out there, trying to identify those and perhaps program them into the building. Um, so that's, that's the next step. And, but first we have to address the, the public safety issues and um, the operations of the facility. And that is a presentation. <laughs> I can answer any questions. Commissioner Ryan? Well, first of all, it's an excellent presentation. I appreciate Thank it. You. I know a lot of work has gone in to, mm -hmm. to get us to this point, so I, I, I do appreciate that. Uh, a little bit on the pro rating. What's the assumption there? I understand what the concept yep. is, but what's the assumption that when the boating season begins? Yep. What, what's normal? That's an excellent question. Um, we are, based on our marina rules, we open the marinas May 1 and they go to November 1. So we look at how many days are, are available to a boater um, when they come in and they pay, you know, for their seasonal slip. And one thing that we did say in, in, in you know, from a staff's perspective is the opening day is when we're going to use Presque Isle Marina as the opening day. So if, if ice isn't out of the marinas until the 16th of May, and Presque Isle opens up the 16th of May, that's when the proration starts. So it's May 1 or when Presque Isle opens. You know, so it's, it's a loss of service. It's a loss of opportunity. Second question, what about the, the portable facilities? Yep. Can you describe those a little bit? I, I mean, are these yeah. beyond porta potties or? They're, they're really interesting. Um, in that uh, they come in on a trailer. So one is the, the six pod uh, lavatory is a, is a dual uh, uh, axle uh, facility. And um, it's set up and in, in it, it looks a lot like an RV type um, facilities. Um, there's three to a side. And um, uh, there is a step up to them. They, there's an $850 or 50 gallon tank. And we, you know, we're gonna try to plumb that right into our collection system. Um, they run off of, uh, of a standard garden hose, so they'll have water. Um, they, they have a uh, propane heater, so they'll have hot water for the showers. Um, and uh, like I said, there's, there's a six pod trailer, and then there's a second one that uh, is an ADA and has a large ramp that actually folds down and meets all ADA accessibility and has the large doors, the large lavatory to where a wheelchair can get in and navigate those types of things. What? How many facilities do we have now? What? How many? How many units? It's how yeah. Many we're rooms, I guess. How many? Yeah, how we're many? Um, a little less. We'll be a little less with what we have, but we think it'll make the uh, it'll it'll meet the demand. And just one more: the uh, the, the new building. Uh, is there an assumption that that can be done this fall? I don't. 
I, I would not say I, no. <laughs> no, I think I think with planning, um, I think if we could could get the plan done, um, get it before you um, by the end of the summer, early fall, I think we'd be very ambitious. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're yeah, welcome. Um, one thing, looking at the electric relocation, it seems really high, 60,000. Is there something extraordinary that we have to do? It's three times, I guess, the water line. Yeah. It's, um, and certainly I, you know, th this is our, our DPW's world, um, and, and they kind of lead us through this uh, with these estimates. And I, I mean, what you're looking for is, is uh, not only taking the electric lines out, but putting temporary and then, you know, temporary facilities up, and um, and then um, putting them in a in a permanent location, to where they'll service the peers and in in the facility. Um, in terms of the detail, I can. Um, I don't know if Mr. Goodman has uh, if he wants to speak to that. Thank you. Uh, the facility uh, superintendent and I took a pretty good look at that. Um, again, the idea is to uh, permanently relocate them. So also, uh, we're not only taking them out of the existing building, but we did not do a, a full assessment of the current transformer. When we get those, uh, you know, approval to, to move on, those costs should go down. So again, these are conservative numbers. Also, there is some, uh, maybe some, a little bit, being a little more um, innovative that we can cut costs more. I've done uh, quite a few projects with uh, our lift stations with similar electrical relocations, and I, I'm comfortable those numbers are, again, they are conservative, but hopefully they'll go down. Okay. Um, the next question I have, I didn't see anything, and I know you can't fit it all in the presentation, but about the, I guess the, Structural analysis of where the building is—is um, is it sitting on good fill? Is do we? Can you talk, I guess, a little bit about? You know, we talk about relocating it. Is that one of the reasons why we would relocate it, maybe further back? Um, anything like that? Yeah, I, I think we have to we have to wait until the building comes down and there's some analysis uh, of that. I know. I mean, it's looking at the building is one thing. We did get a structural analysis and. Um, in that, you know, they said improved foundation design based on site conditions and this loss event is recommended for any replacement cost for the facility. So, you know, essentially, the foundation that's on will either have to be fortified in a, in, in a more effective way or moved. Um, my last question, uh, the only thing that made me nervous was the waiving of the competitive bidding process, mm -hmm. especially with the amount of money. Yep. And I guess it's a, a question for our city attorney. Are we under any state law um, where we have to follow competitive bidding, I guess, if it's over mm -hmm. a certain threshold? or We have it in our charter. So we, can so we have to follow competitive bidding unless there's a, a reason for waiving it. And we can make a determination that we can waive the competitive bidding requirement in our charter, but um, that'll happen when it comes before the commission. commission. I don't think we can make that decision based on a representation at a pre presentation. It have to come okay. before the commission as a, as a business item. Okay. That's I could speak on that a little bit. When we say waive the competitive bidding process, we do it plan on going out to uh, a local electrical contractor for proposals. And we hopefully, uh, you know, if we get authorization to do that, we can probably do that this week and then um, make a determination on the, the, the best proposal. If we, the time, we're, we're uh, really under a timeline. So if we go through the formal bidding process, we'd have to develop uh, specifications, put it in the paper, and then uh, give a couple, two, three weeks, then bring it back to the city commission. So really it's uh, pretty time sensitive to uh, try and make the target date of June 1st. 
but we do plan on you know doing competitive uh, proposals not only for the electrical but also any demolition work okay so meaning that several companies will correct okay yeah. thank you questions um, a couple if I can um, based on what and thank you for the presentation Carl uh, based on what I'm hearing and the, the requirement for um, all due speed we really need to make that motion tonight don't we to be able to get things moving okay um, I'm happy to make that motion and to, again to get the process uh, process off dead center and I would um, assuming it to be an appropriate time Ms. Ms. manager yeah thank you thank you your honor and um, uh, let me offer there's probably some procedural issues with how this how this might work it, uh, it could be included as a motion later on in the consideration for the water raise grant but I, I think the a better way to think about this is we're not asking for a complete waiver of the uh, competitive requirements I think what you heard uh, Superintendent Goodman referring to was that if you go use our standing formal process for issuing the RFPs waiting several weeks for a response going through the the um, uh, standard bidding process there's virtually no possibility that we'd be able to meet the timeline uh, that was laid out for the next 45 days but what you you would see more likely than not is through a competitive proposal process is an, instead of going through with the full advertisements you'd have multiple vendors contacted to see what their response would be uh, you have some I know pieces of equipment that are sensitive to the construction season here in the area uh, they're very limited supply and they're kind of first come first serve I know part of the concern that was raised by staff when they put the presentation together was there might be some pieces of equipment that if we don't act promptly we won't have access to them and they're critical for meeting the time schedule and because this is something now that you're really looking at two phase right you're looking at an immediate need to become operational this season and then you're looking for a more uh, seasoned longer term planning process to deal with our, our permanent requirement what exactly is would be included within an emergency requirement versus not under the charter is a little ambiguous and we don't want to sail too close to that shore we want to make sure that we're following the rules and following the law and in this particular case uh, the, the, an emergency created this situation uh, it would be easy for us to to say that an emergency procurement would be the only way to get out of this but we don't want to do that we want to make sure that the Commission has retains its full authority and has the opportunity to decide just how extensively the, the balance between that full competitive process and the need to get things up by June 1st is and then uh, seek some seek some perspective and some guidance about how they'd like us to solve that balance and how they'd like us to move forward so I have full I have full confidence that staff will be able to get competitive multiple competitive bids for each one of the components that they listed for the phase one uh, operational season and the investments but I'm not sure we could fully comply with a, a full and open competitive process given the June 1st deadline Any further, Commissioner um, if, if I can uh, digress then to another topic uh, I understand that safety is paramount but I also understand that um, really once the building comes down and once the uh, utilities are secured regardless of whether or not we have any uh, 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 um, other units on site the launch ramp is fully usable mm -hmm. yep so I would hope that uh, at the earliest possible date that there's no active work being done and I'll use the term active work because we all know the contractors will tend to come in park their equipment go away and take mm -hmm. a vacation in Cancun and then come on back later and actually go to work sometimes that I'm concerned that during that dead time when there's not an active work project that the the both the the travel lift mm -hmm. and the use of that ramp for the fishing community be fully supported um, 
we heard that loud and clear um, at the uh, Harbor Advisory Committee well, meeting. Well, as well. then I, I, I won't belabor it any further. And, and, and thank you for your time. Right, and so it, it is going to be everything we can do to make sure that, uh, and, and we think that we think that there is enough room, you know, to have an active construction site and leave the ramps open. And if there's if there's a need to keep the bay for the travel lift, if, if there's a need, perhaps that short run, but we also don't want to shut down boating. Um, in all boating in in the city of Marquette, with even our private docks, because many of our private docks rely upon um, the travel lift and the travel lift bay and some of the other, um, you know, our our boat launch. And so we're very sensitive to that, and um, it's going to be something that we'll prioritize when we look at um, how we stage equipment and you know, how we mandate and manage, um, you know, the, the project itself. I'm thinking given the damage to the Presque Isle ramp uh, that we've not yet been fully able to assess but certainly can see, that really is a single launch point for the city, So, the, meaning Presque or, or mm -hmm. Center Pond. So right. we certainly have to do everything we can to yep. keep that functional and operational. Thank you for your consideration. <laughs> Any other commissioner? Any other questions? Okay, see none. Or I, I just Ryan? just want to weigh in in, in favor of, of the expedited process. Uh, you know, I think we should address that. I, I'm very confident that it will still be a competitive process. We're not just going to hand out dollars to contractors. We've we've seen this happen before with our staff, and I know they'll they'll do the best for us. And we have a very limited boating season here, so you know, let's do the best we can. We have the the item for the Cinder Pond uh, Mercy Grant is item number eight. I think perhaps we could address some sort of emergency uh, 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 approval at, at that time, an additional motion. Yes, City Manager. Thank you, Your Honor. It was pointed out to me this wouldn't be unusual even within recent experience. You might recall we had um, around thanks Thanksgiving, Christmas, the opportunity to take advantage of some Black Friday sales to right. get some some <laughs> yes. uh, great deals on some audio video equipment. I think what you're what we're asking for is that same kind of flexibility. Uh, there might be some parts of the solution that, because they're uh, unique or very there are very few of them in the area, uh, if we want to get first dibs on them, uh, they might require us to take action that wouldn't be uh, convenient to the full commission approval process. And so we would be looking, I think, in a very limited way to take advantage of, of those type of deals as well as exactly what uh, you and Commissioner Ryan pointed out just a moment ago, that we'll still be soliciting competitive proposals. We just wouldn't be able to do that through the full formal RFP process. Okay. Uh, it's my understanding during the demolition and stabilization process we need this, these, this extra latitude and then when the actual construction replacement, you'll fit it out in the, in the normal manner. That is accurate. Yes. I guess I'd, I'd just like to make a comment, and I think you, you touched on it, Mr. Zuger, but it's uh, in 30 days, you, you, you and staff and, and the administration, administration have done an amazing job with, with getting this all put together. I know there's a lot of uncertainties throughout the whole process, what insurance would cover, what it wouldn't cover, what you needed, what you, what you didn't need, you know, how is it going to affect the vote, voting season. There's a lot of decisions, a lot of planning that went into this, and, and I commend you and staff for, for, the, for the job. I think the, the city's being well served, and, and we can discuss this uh, uh, a little more latitude and when that agenda item comes up later in the agenda. So thank you. Okay, the next item is boards and commission committees. We've got uh, recognitions of outgoing members and uh, welcoming of one new member is John Craig and William Rexhan present. Okay, and uh, we'll do the recognition of outgoing members first. <laughs> that <be> me. Yeah. <laughs> some goodies here for you. We've got a city pin, a certificate of appreciation for your volunteer effort on the police and fire pension board, and uh, a city T-shirt. So wonderful! That, uh, you, that's the, the 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 swag you get at the end of your term. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and if you'd eight, like to say something, it's eight years well spent. Uh, I'm a retired deputy from Southern California, so when I moved here, I felt compelled to uh, get on the board and make sure that <coughs> fellows of my ilk get a fair shake and get a decent good retirement and there isn't any monkey business so I was happy to serve and I'll probably sit out for a year and then uh, get back on again. 
Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to serve. But thank you. We appreciate your service. And the next item is a recognition of a oncoming member, Bill Brazier. Bill is a member of this is a former member of the Citizen Advisory Board and has come back on. Uh, well, you don't get quite as much. You have to work for your for your Absolutely. your uh, gifts. You do get a city pin, though, too. Thank you. That you can you can wear with honor. And would you like to say anything or any comments? Uh, just that I am uh, honored to be back on the committee and to uh, keep working as much as we can do to uh, bolster our uh, sister city programs and what the future brings for international relations. So thank you very much. And thank you, Bill. Yeah, thank you. Okay, the last item regarding boards and committees, we have a reappointment of a Cynthia Prosen to the Peter White Public Library Board of Trustees for a term ending May 1st, 2019. Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Commissioner Ryan? <laughs> I move we approve the appointment of the reappointment of Cynthia Prosen to the Peter White, Peter White Public Library Board of Trustees for a term ending May 1st, 2019. Second Stonehouse. Thank you. It's been moved by Commissioner Ryan, seconded by Commissioner Stonehouse to appoint Cynthia Prozen to the Peter White Public Library Board for a term ending May 1st, 2019. All in favor say any further comment? Nothing. Commissioner Ryan? Commissioner Stonehouse? Okay. All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. The next item in the agenda is uh, public comment. Comments may not exceed three minutes per person. Please state your name and physical address when making public comments. And come to the the, uh, the podium in front of, of the, the dais. Thank you. Good evening. I have, uh, my name is Jill Moline and I live at uh, 539 West Bluff. I want to propose that we update the anti-discrimination ordinance of the city. I brought uh, samples of two cities, uh, Kalamazoo and Mount Pleasant, and as well as a letter and, and some information for the, uh, the clerk. Uh, this would mean include gender identity and sexual orientation on the list of the other things we don't discriminate against in our town. All right. At first I thought I wasn't sure I needed to speak on this. Uh, after all, I've been coming out of the closet for 33 years. And um, we're on the verge of same-sex marriage in, uh, in Michigan. And... Um, I can rationalize that I own my, my own house and I work for myself. Uh, the thing is that two years ago I wanted a part-time job for the winter and after applying, I spent days wondering, stressing, how I would handle my sexual orientation. I know full well that employers can base their decision on that alone. Would I cave and change the gender pronoun? Um, would I get a lecture or um, scorn or be fired uh, if, if I did get hired. How would I know if they were even remotely cool about that? So I know of worse stories, and those people can tell you them, but I want you to know this is the right thing to do. This is the politically correct thing to do. Uh, we educate ourselves on our differences, but remember that we have much more about us in common. Marquette is a great place to live. Um, I believe this inclusiveness will add incentive for our young people to stay in the area. Um, when I graduated uh, Marquette High, class of 80, right, Bill? Uh, and um, in Northern, there weren't jobs. And uh, so I went elsewhere. But uh, now there are jobs. And to have this inclusivity, I think, would, would really be a feature for our young, young people to say, yeah, Marquette's a cool place, you know. Marquette's going to include me in, in what they want. And so um, I want to thank you in advance for caring about this matter. I want to let you know that I have some folks here. Wanna, 
who's in support of this, who are in support of this, and others can thank you. <laughs> um, so um, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the commission? Good evening, you all. My name is Wayne Nyman. I live at 1111 Norway Avenue. Uh, I was put on a waterlet run uh, on February 4th, and it froze after that with it running, and it froze a third time again after that. Uh, and I was charged for, uh, for two thaw charges. And I certainly did not turn off the water, um, you know, while it was running. And all the freeze-ups were in the roadway. Um, and I don't think it was my fault one bit. I never did anything that would cause it or anything. So uh, basically, I think the charges are very unfair, unless you can actually show that somebody turned their water off. So. Um, as anybody knows, you know, running water can freeze. You look at it, a river or a waterfall. So just because it's running doesn't mean it's not going to freeze. So what I would like to know is what can I do to appeal these charges? And possibly even the city commission could probably look, look at something like waiving charges as such, I believe, which is in your power. So, oh, pardon me, can you, can everybody hear me? <laughs> I don't know how close you have to get to this thing, but um, so basically that's it. Uh, I just think it was unfair, and I'd like to know what can I do about it? Who can I go to? You know, there should be somebody, I would think, correct? Everybody? So uh, I don't know. Does anybody have any questions at all? You just address us. We don't create a document. Okay. I didn't know. No. First time I've been here. Yeah. Sorry. The best thing to s speak yeah. to the city manager if you're. You know, after, He's after the fellow to go to, yeah. Mr. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but. Vida. 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 Okay. I can call up your office and make an appointment, or I can stop by, or how does that? Whatever's most convenient. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm Don Putman, 1027 North Front Street in Marquette. Recently, you folks had a uh, work session scheduled to meet with the, uh, the mining company, the Lundin Mining Company. They were to make a proposal to the city. I suspect that it was a program to allow trucking within the city streets. The meeting notice was very late in coming. This indicates to me that you are not encouraging citizens to attend these important events. And in my view, the more the better. I'm interested in the Lundin proposal. However, I am more interested in the position of our city commission, a position that I presume the city committee is striving to achieve. I don't know that at all. I suspect by your inaction and lack of information of the issues involved, the committee has already agreed to Lundin's proposal. And it's a pro forma thing to have them make the offer to you. And I propose that I would su suggest that the proposal is to pay for some infrastructure costs in return for using city streets as a shortcut to the Humboldt mine. The increased traffic, the added noise, the dust, the danger, and the decreased need for London to find an alternate route is not a fair trade to Marquette citizens. Keep the pressure on them. Let us know what the, com uh, the commission feels in a, in a proper in, uh, agreement. I want to know what commissioners are standing for Marquette streets and citizens' rights. I don't know at this time. Regarding my <clears throat> op-ed last week, one line was redacted. That was, the MGH board did not sell to Duke. The board allowed Duke to, to purchase the MGH on their dictated terms. That was redacted by the publisher. Another sad fact is that the same inept MGH board is now in charge of expending some uh, uh, considerable dollars set up by the Duke for health programs. Will the old MGH board 
be any smarter now than they were previous to the MGH acquisition by Duke. They didn't do well. A good sale would have locked in an agreement that any, any hospital or added parts would be within the city. What's to become of the old hospital, the MGH? It, it, it was consider, considerably a uh, number of parts of it were built within very recent years and shouldn't be scrapped. What's going to become to, of that? We don't want abandoned buildings. We'll be, we'll, we be left with a vacant building of no value to someone and no tax dollars. And this smacks of the, the big box stores appeals to the tax tribunals. They're of no other use. Well, we don't want that to happen. And they're already challenging our tax bill as I see it. Will we be left with that anyway? Commissioners, please tell us what you are planning on, what you want, and what you're trying to get. Thank you. Hello, I'm John Sondreger, 515 Spruce Street in the city of Marquette. And I'm here to urge the City Commission to ask the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to take up the issue of analyzing boat storage and the rowing club. Uh, these are complex issues, and they really have to be analyzed. I've written to each of the commissioners, and I understand you're all very busy and don't have time to respond to such requests. That's why we made the advisory board. So I think if you give it to the advisory board, people would be able to have a dialogue and all sides would be heard. There's a great many stakeholders and many are not comfortable speaking uh, out on these issues. I'm not representing any group. I'm merely here as a taxpayer and as a sportsman. So I noticed in the Rowing Club's editorial, she indicated that she speaks for the Hiawatha Water Trails. I was not aware that she'd spoken with them. We should hear from them to see if they're involved in the plan from their side. I'd like to add, just up the coast, there's a private club for boats. The Market Yacht Club bought and paid for their property, and they pay city taxes. I'm not sure that the city ought to be giving property away to a group that doesn't pay taxes to compete with them. So I, I do urge that you send this to the Planning Commission or to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Sondry. Anyone else wishing to address the Commission? Your Honor and Commissioners, uh, John Keeble, 1005 Cleveland Avenue. It's alumni night, apparently. Uh, I'm here with my friend and former colleague, Commissioner Popvin. Uh, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes and update the public and uh, those here that did not participate in today's events. We had uh, some folks up from Lansing to discuss the issue with the frozen water pipes and, you know, the winter uh, tragedy that we have brewing under our streets and apparently our buildings as well. Uh, I thought the meeting was very well attended. I know Commissioner Stonehouse was there, City Manager Vita was there, Mr. Goodman was there as well, and I appreciate that effort. Um, I think we left on a positive note uh, after the, the, the group meeting. Several of us went upstairs, had a private meeting uh, with Captain Kalinske from the State Police, and uh, it, was, it was very positive. Uh, he certainly got the message. Um, and I feel good about that. He expects a decision hopefully by the end of the week. Now, as most of us know, that is step one. We have many more steps to go, but I think it's, it's a positive step moving forward. Um, I also want to thank uh, the delegation that came down to Lansing to testify in the Senate subcommittee meeting. Um, very important. Uh, you make a difference when you travel that far to come speak to my colleagues down there, so I appreciate that. And then last but not least, I want to say thank you to the Public Works and the Water Department employees. They are really the heroes in, in this winter. And it's not just Marquette, it's Nagani, it's Ishpeming, it's the townships, Republic, all over. These crews are working 16, 18 hour days. There's some crews on the West End that haven't had a day off since January. 
It's unbelievable the work effort they put in. So with that, I'm going to take my seat. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kibola? Anyone else wishing to address the Commission? Frank Jeff Barreto, 350 East Ridge Marquette, to speak on Item 8. These are my opinions. March 31st, three people who usually oppose my side of an issue also spoke out against the boathouse location in addition to a big money name. If they oppose the location, we know there's a problem. I hope Rita was correct in saying you'll have trouble once those trees start to fall. People have died for much less. She correctly stated that no building was to occur east of the boulevard there and that your decision failed to recognize citizens' views during 16 years of vetting. The big money name accused you of ignoring planning efforts, giving public land to an interest group, and setting the precedent for other clubs to seek their piece of our shore. A row were offered to explain why other sites weren't selected. I tried to find out but was told, quote, the rowing club is not opposed to a different location as long as it meets with city approval and meets our safety criteria, water conditions, carry distance, configuration, safety, etc. The site we have proposed meets all the criteria. In trying to identify a location, we tried to keep in mind what was acceptable to the public. We looked at all city plans for guidance. This is how we chose the proposed location, end quote. They and you neglect to admit that all the above is better achieved at the current site. You won't mention this because the explanation is political, as Commissioner Lowry alleged on record. For the rower to offer to tell us and for you not to ask is pure negligence. Shame on you. Rather than address this, Stonehouse blamed rumors and partial information about the boathouse without addressing the viability of the current location. You purposely ignore credible opposition that doesn't align with your personal agendas. In fact, Fred's the king of partial information and exaggeration and hypocrisy. Furthermore, he told us that the licensing agreement and more discussion still lie ahead. We further document your step-by-step -step pacification method to get yourselves through a moment. The same nonsense you belched last July 8th when you said there'd be a planning process when those of us in the know already knew your vote was a done deal. This is dishonest. Like Fred's July 8th claim that the boathouse there retains for the citizens the lakeshore. When the opposite is true, it takes the lakeshore from us. Add to this his documented exaggerations of rescues, one in each harbor, and his and Coyne's assurances to Potvin that no mining or logging trucks will travel Marquette streets. March 31st, Ryan, who seldom addresses a word of mine, claimed our citizens elected him to make motions, so he makes them. So were six others elected, yet Ryan and Coyne continued to act like ball hogs in a basketball game, spreading their carcinogenic influence. How dare Ryan use me to promote himself, especially without addressing the basis of the allegation which pertained to his complaint of Coyne's premature motion. Ryan, Coyne, Stonehouse, and Nimi are increasingly selective about what aspects of an issue they're willing to share. Hence, their integrities are insulted down to their bitter cores. Thank you, Mr. Barito. Any other citizens wishing to address the commission? Anyone wishing to address yeah. the commission? Point of order. Point of order. Point of order on this. I haven't been here that long, but I've worked with these gentlemen, these commissioners, and they're good people, and they try hard to work for the city. They have high integrity, and they work hard, and I respect them. I would like to think that the people addressing them would show them a little respect if they're due. You do not have to be critical to that point. Show them a little respect. They deserve it. Quiet. They've put in many years. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Campana. Any other wish citizens wishing to address the Commission? Being none, we'll close the citizen comments section of the agenda, and we will proceed to the consent agenda. We have a uh, number of items on the consent agenda. Um, commissioners, what is your pleasure regarding the consent yeah, agenda? There is one City bill. Attorney. There is Pardon. one bill to Oh, yes. Uh, we, have to, we have to remove the bills payable because, or one check to Commissioner Stonehouse out of the bills payable. And we will then allow him to abstain from the vote. Um, 
The remainder of the consent agenda sends the one check to Commissioner Stonehouse. What is your pleasure, Commissioners? Commissioner Kimbenzi? I move we approve the agenda as amended. Thank you. Is there support for the motion? A second? Commissioner Campana? Second. Thank you. It's been moved by Commissioner Cambenzi, second by Commissioner Campana to approve the consent agenda with the exception of the check on the bills payable to Commissioner Stonehouse, which was withdrawn for additional action. Anything further, Commissioner Cambenzi? Nothing. Anything further, Commissioner Campana? Nothing further. Hearing nothing, uh, all in favor of the motion say yes. 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 Anyone opposed to the motion say no. Uh, the motion passes unanimously six to zero. We now need to approve a check to Commissioner Stonehouse. Do we have an amount or some? $50. $50? Okay, and that's for travel to testify to the Senate Committee in Lansing yes. on the freeze-ups. Uh, commissioners, what is your pleasure regarding this check? Commissioner Reynolds? I motion to approve the check to Fred Stonehouse in the amount of $50. Thank you. Any Commissioner Kim? Benzi. Thanks. Excuse Support me. that. <laughs> Thank you. It's been moved by Commissioner Reynolds, uh, seconded by Commissioner Cambenzi to approve the payment of the check to Commissioner Stonehouse. Uh, Commissioner Reynolds, do you have anything further to say? Nothing further. Okay. Commissioner Cambenzi, anything further? No. City Manager, you have? Yes, I understand. Yeah. Uh, all in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion is approved five to zero with one commissioner abstaining, Commissioner Stonehouse, Mayor Pro, Pro Tem Stonehouse. Okay, moving along, we now are at new business. Uh, number seven, uh, City Clerk, would you read the background on this item, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Background, the City of Marquette, City Code Chapter 2, Administration, Division 3, Finance, Public Relations, Sections 2, uh, dash 522 policies and procedures estab <coughs> established by City of Marquette Ordinance Number 604 provides a mechanism for community interests to submit requests, waive or discount city fees, and incorporate within the annual city budget process for consideration by the City Commission. Discount and waiver of fees shall be considered and granted only in exceptional circumstances as described in the ordinance and are not considered and uh, entitlement or benefit provided by the city. Discounts and waivers will be considered only when a requesting party demonstrates a com uh, comparable public benefit sufficient enough to justify a reduction in municipal fees. Applications are evaluated by staff to determine uh, base uh, de determine to determine base discount qualification as outlined in the ordinance. A number of applications were received for the current year based upon review of the applications. Staff, discount, uh, staff recommends discounts be granted for Superior Land Soccer Association and Marquette Little League in the amount <coughs> amounts provided under Category 2 and 3 respectively with no further adjustments. The following are the recommend, recommended uh, discount percentages. The applicant is Superior uh, Soccer, Soccer Association. Uh, category 2 is 20% discount, which would equi equate to $1,000, and Market Little League would be in Category 3, or a 10% discount. That would equate to $800. Uh, $818. <clears throat> per Section 7 of the ordinance, consider extenuating factors. The Commission may consider extenuating factors in determining whether to grant or vary a, a, vary a request, discount, or waiver, including but not limited to any profit the event, rental, or program generates from the organization, any monetary benefit received by the city from the event, rental, program, or organization, generally such generally, such as sales tax <clears throat> or some other revenue, any other existing agreements that include in-kind or cash contributions for provided by the city to the organization, both for the event, rental, or program in question, any efforts uh, made by the organization or applicant to further city goals as stated in the city master plan and <clears throat> its individual component plans, economic development, plan or strategic plan, the, the Commission may, <coughs> at its discretion, vary the percentage discount for an applicant based on these factors by no more than 15 percent greater than that provided by the base discount. 
Based upon these factors, staff recommends discounts be granted for Superior Land Soccer Association and Marquette Little League in the amounts provided under Category 2 and 3, respectively, with no other adjustments. Fiscal effect, if approved, general fund revenue will be decreased by amounts proposed. Recommendation, provide Category 2 discount to Superior so, excuse me, to Superior Land Soccer Association and Category 3 discount to Market Little League alternatives as determined by, by the Commission. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, Commissioners, what is your pleasure with this item? <coughs> Mayor Pertem Stonehouse. Sure. Uh, Your Honor, I will motion. Your Honor, I will motion. Thank you. Your Honor, I have a motion to um, uh, provide Category 2 discount to the Superior Land, Superior Land Soccer Association and Category 3 discount to the Marquette Little League. Okay, thank you. Is there a second to the motion? Commissioner Campana? I second that motion. Thank you. It's been moved by Commissioner Stonehouse to provide Category 2 discount to Superior Land Soccer Association, Category 3 discount to the Marquette Little League. The motion has been seconded by <coughs> Commissioner Campana. Any further discussion, Commissioner Stonehouse? Uh, no further discussion. Commissioner Campana, anything further? Nothing further. Okay. Any other commissioner want? Commissioner Ryan? How are these amounts determined? Is this the amount they requested, or was this a determination made by staff? Zuger, could you respond, please? Certainly. Um, this determination was, was based upon the, um, the ordinance. The ordinance is, uh, provides um, four categories that any applicant would fit into um, and uh, based upon our evaluation, which would include the finance director, city attorney, evaluation of the ordinance. Um, that's what the determination was. I'm familiar with the ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not exactly in favor of it. I may have voted for it because it was better than nothing. But, <laughs> um, but I'm asking, for example, why is one a Category 2 and one a Category 3? Was that determination made by the city or by someone else? One, it's an independent, the Superior Land Soccer is an independent organization that uh, is registered within the city of Marquette through the state of Michigan. Um, the Marquette Little League is registered in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is not not registered within the area, and uh, the vast majority of its, or I should say at least half of its, of its participants are outside of the city of Marquette. And they both qualified because they do invest back into the city city facilities. I'm not questioning that they qualify. I think we overcharge both of them. That's my opinion. And, and I'm not, you know, to say that the Market Little League is headquartered in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, I mean, I mean, that's really grasping at straws. You know, I mean, they're a local organization. They raise money locally. They Local kids play. You know, I, I just don't get it. Uh, I, this is not near enough, but, I, you know, I've fought this battle before and never won, so. But, you know, Marquette, the city of Marquette does so little to support youth at youth recreation, it, it, it just disappoints me. But I'll have to vote for this or they get nothing, so. Commissioner Kim Benzie? Well, I, I do have to agree with Don. I, I do not like an ordinance like this. Um, and I've said it before. Um, you know, when you have different groups, it's very hard to make a determination who gets what. And again, it comes down to being subjective. Um, and I don't think government should be subjective. I don't think we should sit there and, and really kind of put a, a group into a category unless they are for-profit or non-profit. Um, I think this just causes a lot of discomfort in our community. I think a lot of people don't understand the determinations, how they're made. Um, I'd like to see us actually get rid of this ordinance and go to a price that is affordable. Um, you know, whatever we're giving in discounts, that should be the price that these groups pay. That should be the rental price per hour or something. I, I just, this ordinance does not sit well with me at all because it's got the perception in our community 
but it's it's favoritism and I will support this because I support all of our youth groups but I guess I would like to see this ordinance go away and we go to a fee structure and I have no problem listing the fees that it takes to actually support the facilities however I just think that the hoops that we're making our, our youth groups and other groups jump through um, and who gets what it's very subjective and um, I guess I should speak to my fellow commissioners on this I hope we can revisit this soon to kind of look at how we are giving discounts and um, coming up with a way that's a little more transparent and fair thank you Campana. Uh, even though I supported this motion, and I still do, I, I'm agreeing with Sarah and Don. Uh, it, it shows favoritism. Um, at, at this level, I don't know how you can uh, make choices like this. I mean, if you're going to Northern, you're paying tuition $5,000 a semester. You can't go in there and bargain down your payments. You know, I just think that we should set a fee. And that's the fee. If it's too high, well, then let's set it lower for everybody to the point where we're still not losing money on this. But, um, you know, why is soccer better than Little League? They're both good organizations, but there's a discrepancy that I don't think should exist. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Commissioner Campan. Commissioner uh, Mayor Pritem Stonehouse. Sometimes we have short memories. And I remember before we had the ordinance of trying to wrestle down each and every decision group by the committee of the whole. And nobody liked to do that. That was difficult. That was decision making. That was a lot of local pressure from local groups because we had this, that, the other thing. And the intention with the ordinance was to level the playing field and to provide a methodology that would be fair for everybody. And if, if we don't think this is accomplishing that, then the alternative is we go back to the old way where we deal with each separate group individually and make decisions that are essentially very subjective based on those individual groups. And the intention of this ordinance was to level that playing field. So if we want to go back to the old way, I'm happy to go back to the old way, but understand that that's a lot of difficult arm wrestling and a huge amount of subjectivity because you're never able to come up with a finite answer that fits everybody. And this was an intention, to, this was an effort to try and sculpt it in that fashion, to manage the chaos that we had previously. Hence, I'll support this. If we want to go back and look at a different way of doing it, I'm happy to do it. But understand, that's the chaos we had before. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Cambenzi? Well, I just, I, I find it odd that the public schools and Northern and other organizations can set fees, and some people might not like them, but I think they're reasonable, and I think that people will pay them. They will find a way to pay them. Are we ever going to cover the costs of all of our facilities? Probably not. However, I think if other organizations around us do it and people pay it and people think it's fair, I think we can go back to that. I think we can find a compromise. I just, to sit here and have staff do it, I think it's unfair of staff to have to make the determination to bring forward to us. I mean, I think it puts staff in a very uncomfortable position because they're the ones bargaining with these groups. And again, I, I would like to see this change in the near future. Commissioner Stonehouse, or I'm sorry, Commissioner well, Ryan. Well, since I'm the one that started this, let's, you know, there are fees, you know, and, and it kind of that's where the issue is with me. You know, we say that it costs this many dollars to maintain the soccer and baseball fields and that these organizations have to pay that money. And I'm saying I think the city of Marquette should invest some money in youth recreation. I think it's important we invest money in other things as well. And I, th I, th I just think it's very important that we do. And I think the fees have become what we're not seeing here, and I don't know if staff can tell me, is what amount the soccer association will pay this year or what amount the Little League will pay, because it's a significant amount of money. And the money is all raised locally, and it's necessary for these kids to be able to play these sports. So this is, you know, what they're getting here is kind of a pittance compared to, to what, they're, what they're going to have to pay to use these fields. I, you know, I've, I'm familiar with other communities where they don't charge anything to use these kinds of facilities. In Marquette, we do. We try to charge exactly what it costs which means we don't want to contribute anything to 
youth recreation, except in this case, with this motion, $1,800, I guess. Do you have that? Are those figures available? Mm -hmm. Yes. Figures? Um, I have the 2013 numbers, the actual numbers, if that's appropriate. Sure. Uh, Little League uh, had a total of 79.35, so 7,935. That was their total use, or their total bill. And then Superior Land Soccer was approximately $5,000. Okay. And make oh. make it clear, I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming you. This is a this is a commission decision. This is not a staff decision. You, you're administering the policies that we've set, and I'm just disagreeing with the policies. So. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Do you have anything further, Commissioner Stonehouse? Or? I, I would just suggest that if we're not happy with what we're doing, we should probably look at this during budget season, during the budget session, where we can argue it down to the best method or the best methodology to do it. Um, and I don't know that right now we should should really are prepared to do that with the information that we should have at our fingertips. Ryan. Just to say that I, I, I agree with that, and we did do that, and we disagreed. And so I'm just voicing my disagreement. That's all that's happening here. And uh, I guess I'll do it every time it comes up, but it's not going to change anything. We're going to go ahead, and as I said, my only alternative is to vote yes or no. And so I'll certainly vote yes because I want to give them all the help I can. Okay. Um, Commissioner Kambenzi. Just one quick final comment. I, I would like to look at a budget session. I agree with Fred that, you know, we have looked at this before. Um, but I think the real issue is that it costs more to run our facilities and have our facilities and our ice time and everything than, than really our, our kids and our families can afford to pay. And so I think the issue is, is much bigger. However, um, I think there's a point where we need to figure out how much are we willing to invest above and beyond what comes back as revenue. Um, like Don said, I think it's I think it's important, and I would just like to see a straight fee across the board. So um, I will put this on my radar for our budget session. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll I'll weigh in here. I. I you know, I, I think I, at times I tend toward uh, Commissioner Cambenzi's position. I, when this has come up before, I've, I've, I've voted to, to maintain the fees as, as proposed by staff because there is a considerable expense. Uh, if Commissioner, uh, Mr. Zuger, could you give me a rough estimate what we pay annually on, on ballpark maintenance? Is it in the neighborhood of forty to $50,000 or is that more or less? Or um, the figures I've seen, and, and certainly the, the parks, uh, the DPW parks uh, division oversees them. But the figures I've seen, it's about fifteen thousand per field. Okay. And how many fields do we have? Nine. Nine. So that's uh, one hundred thirty, one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars, approximately. Uh, that's a that's a big chunk of change, and that's what we pay for for to support youth programs in the city of Marquette. They're not all used. I've got youth. the floor. Okay. Thank you. Well, you're um, looking at me. And well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to, to lead you on, <laughs> um, but I, you know, I think that, you know that is part of what we we do to support youth. And and I, you know, I side with Commissioner Stonehouse on this ordinance. It's not it's not perfect, uh, but we've had uh, we've struggled, you know, with with uh, extreme subjectivity in the past, and I think it gives uh, and. and Admittedly, the onus is on staff to to apply some latitude and, and do some uh, interpretation of, of the, the the merit or demerit of, of the the group that's requesting the the discount. And so, it, it, from that standpoint, you know, I, I agree it puts them in a, a poor position. But I think it's the best thing we've had since my in my six years on the commission. We've struggled with this, and and I know Commissioner Ryan's always supported uh, uh, free relief and and. Uh, and we've spent a lot of time in budget sessions doing that. If we want to address it again, I, this ordinance, I guess, I guess that's fine. And, and uh, I, I, if you want to make one more comment, I no, no, I just wanted, didn't mean to. No, no, to, I appreciate that. On. I just wanted to say all <laughs> the fields aren't used by youth. You know, we have we have a that's lot of true. other people using fields yeah. too. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further comments? Um, I'll call the question, but I'm not sure I remember the question. <laughs> 
City Clerk, I, I, I neglected to mark it down, would you? Your Honor, um, the question is, um, excuse me, the recommendation is to provide Category 2 discount to Superior Land Soccer Association and Category 3 discount to Market Little League. And it was moved by Commissioner uh, Kambenzi and scored by Campana? Uh, no. Stonehouse, Stonehouse, Stonehouse and, and Campana. Scored by Campana. Yes. Okay. Anything further on, on the, the motion? Is anyone clear, everyone clear on the motion what we're voting on? Okay. Uh, all in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion is passed unanimously. Thank you, Commissioners. The next item on the agenda is number eight, the uh, Cinder Pond Marina, Michigan Department of Natural Resources Waterways Emergency Program Grant Application. Uh, City Clerk, would you read the background, please? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Background on March 12, 2014, a large crack was noticed to the exterior masonry wall on the southwest corner of the, mar of the Cinder Pond Marina Harbor Building. The Michigan Municipal League Liability and Property Pool retained an engineering, engineering service to evaluate the building. The engineering services investigation revealed significant structural damage and recommended the building not be repaired because of the risk of future deep penetrating frost, uh, frost covering, uh, causing similar future events. Based on the engineering report, MML has determined that the loss of the building is within the city's coverage. Over the past three weeks, staff communicated with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Waterways to consider an emergency program grant to address most of the immediate public safety threats and operational needs. <clears throat> Based on the feedback from waterways, staff completed a grant application that addresses demolition and utility relocation expenses. The scope of the work with the associated uh, estimated cost is as follows. Demolition, $25,000. Electric utility relocation, $60,000. Water utility relocation, $20,000. Fuel monitoring uh, relocation, $5,000. Engineering design, uh, $11,000, contingency $16,500, small project contingency $20,625 for a total estimated cost of $158,125. The, <clears throat> the emergency grant request is a match uh, reimbursement grant, 50% state and 50% local match. If recognized as an emergency grant, funds may be available this summer. If not, the grant will be prioritized in the FY 2015 Waterways Program grant funding for FY 2016. A Waterways Commission meeting is scheduled for April 25th, at which time the emergency grant application will be considered. Fiscal effect, the grant requires a local match of $79,100. Recommendation, approve the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Waterways Emergency Program grant totaling $79,100 and author authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the resolution authorizing emergency funding. Uh, alternatives as determined by the commission. Thank you, City Clerk. Um, Mr. Barito, you requested time to address this issue. Frank Jeff Barito, 350 East Ridge Marquette. These are my opinions. You could have moved this item up, being that no one else was served time for a prior item, and no discretionary reason is apparent. When applying for grants, never lose sight of the fact that you're applying for the use of state taxpayer funds that can benefit another community, if not ours. It's up to DNR officials in Lansing to apportion these funds fairly and properly based upon all known information, which you people have shown the reluctance to share on many issues. Concerns arise as to what extent the liability falls upon the contractor regarding this masonry building that won't live to see its 20th birthday. Much older buildings in the immediate vicinity don't show this construction flaw despite enduring the same winters as Cinder Pond Marina. Nowhere in your, in your documents is any suspicion placed on the contractor who coincidentally faced tax allegations around the time of construction. Although the building is insured, major payouts inevitably result in rate increases for all policyholders. Recent articles don't reveal the whole story as to the level of inconvenience that this alleged construction flaw will cause to all users of our lower harbor, not just the boaters. There's the hassle of demolishing the building, 
hauling in temporary facilities, delaying the start of the boating season, the diminished visual quality for the entire season, noise at every step in the process, the wasted materials and the wasted manpower to demolish and reconstruct a building that lasted only 19 years. You're urged to discuss the contractor's liability openly tonight. Unless a previously unforeseeable geological or settling issue is found, hold him liable to keep our insurance rates down and to reserve state grant funds for new funds for new projects to enhance communities that have no facilities or outdated facilities rather than to replace a building that failed decades before its life expectancy. The time has come to hold people accountable, including yourselves on many issues, instead of taking the easy route by applying for grant monies, in this case, redundant grant money. What this does is leaves our state taxpayers holding the bag. Thank you, Mr. Barito. Commissioners, what is your pleasure with this item? Commissioner Ryan. I move we approve the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Waterways Emergency Program grant totaling $79,100 and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the resolution authorizing emergency funding. There's a second. Commissioner Cambenzi. Support. Okay. It was moved by Commissioner Ryan, supported by Commissioner Cambenzi to approve the recommendation for the emergency grant. Uh, Commissioner Ryan, anything further? Well, we've had a lot of discussion on this earlier tonight. Obviously, it's something that has to be dealt with uh, through a lot of issues. Um, a lot of expenditures will be on this grant. We have to look for all the help we can get, and uh, we, we want to move this forward expeditiously. So here's an opportunity. The, the Michigan Waterways Commission is involved because, you know, we do make these facilities available to transient boaters, too, and, and they're, they're concerned about them. So I think it's important that we move ahead with this. Kim <coughs> I would just remember in our dialogue before, did we want to include anything in the language about um, waiving the competitive bidding and putting in that we will receive competitive bids by our staff contacting? Competitive quotes. Competitive quotes, I guess we can call it. We could we could do that, expand the motion if you desire. Your Honor, I, I didn't know if we wanted to do it. Or do we want to do all that as a one, separate but I motion? Why don't we do that as a separate motion? It's probably cleaner and simpler. Easier on Dave, certainly. Certainly. <laughs> Anything further, Commissioner Kimbenzi? Nothing further. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse? Well, only just to remind people by uh, uh, full disclosure is that I do usually rent a slip, have rented a slip in the city of Palm Green and will continue to do so. I see no particular benefit to this, to me, beyond any other boater that's able to get in whenever they are able to get the boats in. But I do have a concern, which is why I raised it earlier and, and uh, during Mr. Ziegler's presentation, that every effort be made to get the launch ramps open so the folks who really use that marina are able to do so, the small boat launchers back and forth. That was the reason for my concern, not my own boat, which will get in whenever it gets in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Stonehouse. Anything further? Any other commissioner? Okay. I guess I, I just want to kind of dovetail on a... a your, your comment, uh, Mayor Patricia Stonehouse. I, you know, at somewhere in, in the, the reports I saw where you know, we were talking about uh, uh, disruption there to get boats in, et cetera. I think maybe at the Harbor Advisory Committee they had this, such discussions. And, and I'm confident staff has, has really fast tracked this, as I have mentioned. They've, they've done a, a, a very good job of, of getting this moving forward. And, and I suspect that they'll accommodate the, the boating public at, at every juncture that they can safely do so. And, and even if they're tearing down the building, you know, in Chicago you have, and, and large cities you have, have uh, construction going underway and you have people walking through protected sidewalks. And, and I'm not sure we can't uh, in, institute some of those uh, uh, guards and, and so that we do have the ability of our, our launch ramp and, and the maximum usage of our, our, our boating facilities. Uh, if there is no further discussion, any further discussion by any commissioner? Any comment desired? Okay, hearing none, it was moved by Commissioner Ryan. It was seconded by Commissioner Cambenzi to approve the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Waterways Emergency Program grant totaling 79100 and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the resolution on behalf of the city. Uh, all in favor, say yes. 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 Any opposed, say no. The motion is passed unanimously. Now I, I would entertain a motion to... Uh, 
grant our, our staff some emergency uh, powers to, to effectuate what's necessary to get this, this project moving. Commissioner Ryan? Do you? Yes, I would like to move that we approve the city manager receiving emergency procurement authority to include at waiving competitive bidding process and proceed with the proposed scope of work not to exceed $260,000 or limits of the insurance claim and grant proceeds. Um, is there a second to that motion? Make sure I Mayor Tim Stonehouse. Okay. I'll take my orange jacket. Okay. Um, Anything further, Commissioner Ryan? Uh, I, again, I think we've talked about this, but the, the, the idea is to get this moving. You know, we have a boating season that could be opening in a month, and uh, we're, we're not going to make that, but we want to make it available as soon as we can. What this does, it doesn't mean we're not going to go out and get different bids and, and uh, prices from contractors, but we're not going to take you know, what can stretch out into weeks and months. We're going to try to do it in, in a couple of weeks, and so I think that makes sense. I just have one question. When we when we put the amount of two hundred sixty thousand dollars in, uh, are we perhaps limiting? Uh, I wonder if we want to use that as an illustrative amount rather than a limiting amount. I, I took it right from their presentation. So I know, but what if they're what if they goof and they need another ten thousand and and uh, it, you know, they have to come back to us? Then okay. could we perhaps say I, I'm willing in the neighborhood of two hundred sixty thousand? <laughs> sure. Okay, is that? Yeah, I, I think, Your Honor, we're say we're comfortable with the recommendation okay. we made, okay. and uh, that it's not to say we aren't going to be coming back to you with the right. approval for the procurement. It just means okay. that you're giving us the flexibility okay. to take action, maybe in advance of the the full cycle that you've been that you normally become accustomed to. Uh, I know if we're off by ten thousand uh, dollars, then. Uh, we'll hold we'll hold ourselves accountable for that, uh, but I think the the spirit of this is to try to lean as forward far forward as we can to make sure right. that we're we're going to hit June first. So okay, thank you, Commissioner Stonehouse. Anything further on this issue? Nothing further. I think Commissioner Ryan explained it very okay. well. Anything further from any commissioners? Okay, hearing none. All in favor of the motion, say yes. 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 Any yes. opposed, say no. <coughs> the motion is passed unanimously. Uh, now we're at the point of the commission uh, agenda where we go into closed session. Yeah, Honor, the just attorney, a, uh, just a point of clarification: the uh, agenda has a reason for the open, uh, going into closed session, and there's a word missing. I just want that included in whoever makes the motion to go into closed session, and that's in the last line. It should read detrimental financial effect. Okay. And just to remind uh, Your Honor that this is a roll call vote. Yes. Thank you. Commissioners, what is your pleasure with the close commission? <laughs> I'll take uh, Commissioner okay. Coyne's place tonight in competition with Commissioner Ryan. Okay. Um, I motion that uh, pursuant to MCL 15.268 Bow Leg E, to consult with the city attorney regarding trial or settlement strategy in connection with the case of the city of Marquette v. Charter Township of Marquette pending in the Michigan Tax Tribunal for the reason that an open meeting would have a detrimental financial effect on the litigating or settlement position of the city. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? Commissioner Cambenzi? I'll support. Anything further? Uh, Commissioner Stonehouse? Nothing further. Thank you. Commissioner Cambenzi? Okay. City Clerk, could you call the roll? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Commissioner Kim Benzie? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Campana? Yes. Commissioner Coyne? Commissioner Reynolds? Yes. Commissioner Ryan? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse? Yes. And Mayor Nimi? Yes. Okay, with that, then we need to clear the chambers. We will be going in closed session. Now we have microphones. Okay, we are now back in closed session. Open, Open session. We're, we were in closed session. Uh, the purpose of the closed session was to discuss the, the terms of a settlement of a case with the Township of Marquette 
uh, on a pending case to the ta Michigan tra Tax Tribunal. Uh, City Clerk, would you read the proposed stipulation for entry of consent to judgment, please? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> This is the uh, State of Michigan Department of Consumer and Industry Services, Michigan Tax Tribunal. Uh, City of Marquette is the petitioner, and uh, the Charter Township of Marquette is the respondent. This is MTT docket number 435154, um, parcel numbers 5208-028-014-00, etc. Uh, stipulation for entry of consent judge, judgment. One, the subject properties are located in Marquette County. Two, the uh, subject properties are redesignated as being used for public recreational purposes by resolution of the petitioner, copy of which is attached as Exhibit A, and accordingly are classified as tax exempt properties under MCL 211.7 M. Uh, three, the subject properties are located in the Market Area Public School District, the Market Alger Regional Educational Service uh, Agency Intermediate School District, and the Gwynn Area School District. Four, the average level of assessment is 50% for the tax years 2012 and 13. Five, the original assessed uh, state equalized and taxable values are shown below. Uh, in charts, which won't, will not be read here, but will be part of the record. Six, the revised true cash assessed and state equalized and taxable values are shown below, also in a chart that will be in the record, or in two charts. Uh, seven, the revised taxable values are lower than the revised state equalized values for both 2012 and 2013 because the subject properties are reclassified as tax exempt under MCL 211.7M. Eight, the respondent will pay full refund of any and all taxes paid by the petitioner under protest plus interest calculated pursuant to the applicable Michigan Tax Tribunal in interest rate for 2012 and 13 stated in the MTT Bulletin number 14 of 2012 and MTT Bulletin number 21 of 2013 as set forth in the attached Exhibit B. Nine petitioners' uh, 2014 tax bill for the subject properties will reflect their, their reclassification as tax exempt. And ten, the stipulation constitutes the entire agreement between the, the parties as to the uh, properties' assessments for the tax years at issue. Uh, this is re uh, submitted by uh, our city attorney, Mr. Keefe, and uh, the respondent, uh, Mr. Roger Zappa. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, commissioners, uh, what is your pleasure regarding this stipulation for entry of consent judgment? Got it. Commissioner Ryan? I move we approve the stipulation for entry of consent judgment in settlement of the tax tribunal matter between the city and the township to be effective upon its approval by the Marquette Township Board and authorize the city attorney sign the stipulation on behalf of the city. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? Commissioner Campana? I will second that motion. Okay. It's been moved by Commissioner Ryan, seconded by Commissioner Campana to, in, in summary, approve the stipulation. Commissioner Ryan, anything further? Yeah, I'm not an attorney, but perhaps just a brief uh, explanation might be in order, and that is the taxation on lands within Marquette Township owned by the city of Marquette in the area we call the Hartwood Forest. Uh, was taxed probably because we changed the how it was designated uh, from recreation to surplus, and that resulted in a, a tax being assessed on the lands. We we uh, we brought that matter to the tax tribunal, and uh, that case would be uh, going before the tribunal later this month. I think in a good faith effort between the city and the township, an effort was made to settle that dispute. And that this is the uh, result of that settlement, that they will, in fact, uh, no longer tax those properties and will retain the, uh, will return the taxes that have been paid over the past couple of years. And uh, we will, again, designate that property as public recreation. Uh, I, I think it's a good, it's a good step forward. And as I say, I think it's a very good, good faith effort between the two units of government trying to work together. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Commissioner Campana, anything further on the 
just this is a good situation where we get our money back and we'll not have to pay in the future. So for the taxpayers, it's a good move, not counting the other considerations that we had, but this is a good move. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Commissioner Kambenzi? I'd like to weigh, on, weigh in on this. Um, I will be voting no on this. Um, and I would like to state the reason that I do believe by voting yes on this and not taking it to the tax tribunal. We are giving up our ability to plan for the land for the future as our sovereign right, even if we own land in another jurisdiction. Uh, if I could have uh, staff help me explain it a little bit to the public, um, what that actually means um, would be appreciated. I think what you're referencing is that the Public Act 33 of 2008, the State Planning Act, provides that a city or a village, the planning jurisdiction, can include any areas outside of municipal boundaries that in the Planning Commission's judgment are related to the planning of the municipality. And um, the Act does provide that. That is what the city had done at that time. However, uh, via consent, you're basically relabeling it. I guess is the best explanation I could give. And uh, through relabeling it, then that would be, in essence, the planning of the property as opposed to going through a planning process. I guess I'd just like to follow up and say that we promised our taxpayers we would go through a planning process for the entire Hartwood Forest. We have not finalized the plan. We had an ad hoc committee. And I think we owe our taxpayers this process. This has nothing to do with being a good neighbor. It has nothing to do with trusting the township. It has nothing to do with wanting to come to a resolution and come to the table together to talk about our joint interests in this land. But I'm disappointed that we're willing tonight to not go through this process and to come together with them afterwards after it's decided upon and start planning for this land. Any other commissioner? Any comments? Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse? I would only point out certainly there's some difference of opinion as to whether or not the settlement would significantly um, affect future planning of the property. Uh, there is, um, again, much opinion on both sides of that. But certainly nothing in this settlement would prohibit future planning of the property in, 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 in total regard of the Hartwood Forest. Um, it's really just an apple and an orange issue. We need to sit down. We need to do it. We've all committed to do it, and I think we will get it done. But settling this is an is a entirely different band of, uh, band of animal. It's a settlement that works out to the benefit of both the township and, and the city of Marquette, particularly our taxpayers, and not having to continue to pay $20,000 a year of taxes to the township that really, uh, again, based on use of the property, are uh, uh, not uh, not considered to be proper. I would point out that if you take this and continue it forward to the Michigan Tax Tribunal, you're in a court of law, you could win and you can lose. And regardless of the strength of your case, um, you win or lose. And in effect, you're gambling with the future of a huge amount of money that potentially would be at risk over time. This is a very good settlement, and I'm very happy that uh, we were able to, to wrestle it down to the table. I think in a very gentlemanly manner uh, between this, the city of Marquette and the township of, uh, of Marquette. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Stonehouse. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Reynolds? Um, <clears throat> two things. Um, I just also, we had some lengthy discussions in our closed session about this matter and um, the difference of opinion is talking with an attorney and somebody that's a planner. And um, with Sarah Convenzi's background and also being on the Planning Commission and stuff, I also echo her opinion and will be voting no. Commissioner Convenzi, do you have anything further? I guess I, I'm, I'm disappointed that we're not willing, as we ask our taxpayers to pay a half a million dollars a year on this land, we're afraid of losing $20,000 mm -hmm. to take it to the tax tribunal when it's our sovereign right to plan for land in the Planning Act, mm -hmm. I, I hope other community members are as outraged as I am over this. I think this is 
a very yeah. foolish move. And I think we need to remember that we are here to support our taxpayers first and to be good neighbors, but our taxpayers come first. And we need to keep our right to be able to plan for this land. I, I guess I'd like to publicly thank Commissioner Reynolds for also seeing this view on this. Okay, Commissioner Ryan. Uh, you know, I think it's unfortunate when Commissioner Kambenzi takes it to the point of calling the actions of others foolish. You know, it's, this is a matter of differences of opinion, and that's what happens around this table, and it's not a matter of somebody being foolish and somebody not being foolish, and to suggest that one person is concerned about the taxpayer's interest and those who have a different opinion is not, I, I don't think is the, is the way this debate should be conducted. I'm concerned about the taxpayers, too. These are, these are parcels of land that are in Marquette Township. They have the authority to zone them as they will. We did go through a planning process for the Hartwood Forest. We appointed a commission to do that, and they came back with a report. There's much more that this commission has to do. There's some areas within that uh, ownership that were kind of left up in the air. The particular parcels here were not. They were labeled as surplus. Frankly, I think there are many of us on this commission who would prefer to sell them because they, they don't contribute marginally to recreation. They certainly don't contribute to the future of the city of Marquette. And, and you know, it, it just creates issues like this. So. Commissioner Stonehouse? I was only going to point out that, you know, comments made regarding what we can and can't do are, are really very subjective. Uh, there is no absolute, there is no guarantee that because of the Planning Act, whatever, we can't do that. There's opinions, the other side, so certainly we can. In fact, legal authority and the, the city attorney takes a different uh, perspective of that. So when we look at the opportunity to save 20000 to return $41,000 to the city, to save $20,000 a year in tax over time, that's, my gosh, you know, we're just throwing money away. We have the opportunity to capture right now and still have the ability to do everything with that property that we may so choose to do. Understanding that we do not control the zoning of the property. That, that will lie within the confines of Marquette Township, and that's fine. That's the way it is. But uh, I think this is an outstanding settlement and, again, really reflects the ability of both units of government to sit down and work out a thorny issue together. I, I commend everybody for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse. Any further comments? Commissioner Campana? I'm going to base my vote on you know, the fact that the staff and the city attorney have put a lot of effort work into this decision. And, uh, you know, depending, based on what they have to say, I think that it's a wise choice to vote yes. Uh, this will get back, as everyone has said, the 40 some thousand and 20,000 each year thereafter for who knows how many years. The property is still ours. You know, we don't know what's going to happen, but to me, this seems like the best solution right now. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Commissioner Campana. I guess I, <clears throat> I agree that. I think it would be irresponsible for us not to do this. Uh, we'll get the, we've paid $40,000 or a little less than $41,000 in, in taxes, which we paid under protest. We took it to the tax tribunal as, as our, is, is our right. The township disputed that as is their right. Um, we reached an agreement where uh, we realized that uh, it's to the benefit of both parties and certainly it's a great benefit to our, our taxpayers to get the $41,000 back that we protested and not have the obligation of $20,000 into perpetuity or, or however long we, we own the land that is being taxed. Uh, you know, right now we have another additional $5 million that we're going to spend for the Hartwood Forest property. That's the, the principal on the bonds plus, plus interest. And uh, so it's uh, whatever we can save, uh, I think, is good. And, and I think there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a larger picture here, too. I think we're, we're finally working along with our township rather than uh, doing an adversarial relationship. We're sitting down and, and saying, well, hey, you know, let, you know, let's settle this. And I think that's to the benefit of everyone, and, and we need to do more and more in that future. And, and as, I, as long as I'm mayor, we, we will do that. Um, any further comments by any commissioners? Hearing none, I'd like to call the question. It's been moved by Commissioner Ryan, uh, seconded by Commissioner Cambenzi, or Campana, excuse me. 
that we approve the stipulation for entry of consent judgment in settlement of the tax tribunal matter between the city and the township to be effective upon its approval by the Marquette Township Board and authorize the city attorney to sign the stipulation on behalf of the city. All in favor of the motion say yes. 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 Anyone opposed to the motion say no. 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 Okay. The motion is, is approved on a vote of four to two. We also have a, a second item, a resolution renaming the property. City Clerk, would you please read that, read that resolution? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, whereas on June 1st, 2005, the city, <clears throat> the city, <clears throat> excuse me, the city of Marquette purchased from the Hartwood Forest Fund for certain real property located in the city of Marquette, the Charter Township of Marquette, and Sands Township to be used for public purposes. And whereas in 2012, Following the city's relabeling of following of the following properties as surplus, the uh, Charter Township of <clears throat> Marquette reclassified and assessed these properties identified by uh, the parcel numbers herein uh, located in Marquette Township as developmental slash vacant. And whereas <clears throat> on or about May 15, 2012, the city of Marquette filed a petition in the Michigan Tax Tribunal to invalidate the assessment on the grounds that since it since its purchase in 2005, these properties have been and continue to be used for public recreational purposes, purposes and are exempt from taxation under MCL 211.7M. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Mar Marquette officially relabels the following properties identified by the parcel numbers uh, here and again as being used for public slash recreational purposes. Uh, parcel number... 52-08-32-08-20 uh, is excluded from reclassification reclassifi due to its sale to the Market County Solid Waste Management Authority, adopted this 14th day of April 2014, and signed uh, Robert Neamey, Mayor. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, Commissioners, what is your pleasure regarding this resolution? Commissioner... Commissioner Ryan. I move we approve the resolution to be effective upon Marquette Township Board's <coughs> approval of the stipulation for entry of consent judgment. Okay. Is Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse? I second the, uh, the motion. Okay. Commissioner Ryan, anything further? This is all just part of the last discussion, and uh, we're, we're following through, and we're, we're re-identifying this property as being in the public and <coughs> recreation category, which is where it started. Anything further? Any Commissioner Stonehouse? Nothing further. Thank you. Any other commissioner wanting to address Commissioner Cambenzi? Yes, I have a question of staff. Um, is it necessary to relabel the property? Further from any commissioner? Hearing no, nothing further, uh, I call the question. It was moved by Commissioner Ryan, seconded by Commissioner Stonehouse to approve the resolution. Uh, all in favor say, do we have to do a roll call vote in the resolution? Uh, it's not yes, unanimous. It's not be unanimous. Okay. So okay. We'll do a, yeah. Um, Moved by Ryan, support by Stonehouse to adopt the resolution as read by the clerk. Uh, Mr. C City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Or yes, Your Honor. Call vote? Uh, Commissioner Kim Benzi? No. Commissioner Campana? Yes. Commissioner Reynolds? No. Commissioner Ryan? Yes. Commissioner Stonehouse? Yes. And Mayor Neamey? Yes. The motion is passed 4 to 2. Okay. The Next item on the agenda is comments from the commission. Uh, we'll start with Commissioner Reynolds. Mine is brief. I just wanted to thank Barb for giving us this packet of information. I had a moment um, to check it out, and I would be in support of something like this, and I appreciate all of you guys coming in, and it's really awesome. That's all. Commissioner Ryan. I'll keep it short, too, but I do want to thank uh, Carl Zuger and the rest of city staff for their efforts on the uh, Cinder Pond Marina problem, the, the fact that we're going to have to uh, 
tear down the building because of problems that develop there. And there are efforts to try to move this process forward so that it will be, so that the marina will be available for, for boating purposes, uh, hopefully by, by uh, early June. And uh, I think a lot of work and effort has gone into it. Also, certainly continued thanks to all of the city staff for their continuing efforts. You know, we continue to make headlines with water problems, sewer problems, streets caving in problems, major water problems. And, uh, you know, there are guys, there are people out there uh, working all the time to get us back into action. And, and uh, I, I certainly do appreciate their efforts, and I'm sure all of us sitting at this table do. So thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Ryan. Commissioner Kim Benzie. Um, I'd like to congratulate the Royals uh, hockey team. It's nice to have a hockey team in our community, um, home at Lakeview Arena. And I can't wait to rub it into my friends uh, in Minnesota when I live there because the first question I got asked was, <laughs> you guys play a lot of hockey up there, but you're probably not as good as us. So I can't wait to, uh, <laughs> to tell them um, that we now have the Bush Cup, so that's good. Um, with the cinder pond, I'm glad we talked about um, you know, waiving the competitive bidding, but just letting the community know that um, we will be soliciting bids for this um, just to expedite the process. And lastly, I would like to um, uh, thank you for bringing this packet up here for the anti-discrimination policies. It is state law, which does trump ours, but I think um, I'd be happy to see it written in our, in our policy here. So. Thank you for bringing that up, and that's all I have. Commissioner Campana. Uh, Barb, again, thank you for the packet, and thank you for coming back for the remainder of the meeting. Um, in regards to the Cinder Pond Marina, um, I've been getting a few calls more than I normally get, so I'm uh, glad to see that the city staff is uh, actively working to take care of the situation. Um, I just hope that the boaters have patience and understanding. They kind of want, you know, we can only do so much in a short period of time, and I hope they understand that, and I think they will, especially since we're moving fast. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Commissioner Campana. Mayor Pro Tem Stonehouse. Well, I guess it's fair to, uh, to make the observation that winter still lays its cold, dead hand across our land. And if you look at the weather forecast, it looks like for the rest of the week will be the same. But kudos to all of the DPW teams that are out there working so hard, uh, and not only in Marquette, but certainly across the Upper Peninsula. We, uh, we are just owe a, a tremendous uh, amount of debt to these, fo these guys and gals, too, in, in many instances. Uh, when I was down looking at 7th Street, where 7th Avenue, where we had the collapse, the, the, the water main go, uh, I finished that and kind of rolled up the car and turned on Barrigan, and here's a team sitting there with a big welder on thawing pipes. So it just goes on and on. And I would caution people, though the weather may be turning a little bit milder towards the end of the week, uh, it's still danger of freeze and, and the, the necessity of, of certainly keeping, uh, keeping, keeping on top of that. Uh, and thanks, too, for the information. We need to certainly do that. Uh, appreciate it. Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Stonehouse. Um, I guess I'll start out with this uh, anti-discrimination ordinance. I, I agree. I, I, I would support it. Uh, it ought to be done on the state law level, but perhaps if they're not going to do it, we need to do it on a local level to spur them to do such things. And, and it's it's long overdue, and and perhaps we can get it teed up in, in an agenda in the future. Um, I echo also the the, the kudos to the, to our crews. You know, these these guys have been working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm sure once in a while they get a day off, but it's pretty paltry when you know since the beginning of January they've been they've been keeping our 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 residents in, in water, uh, you know, probably we, we, take, we take them for granted. Uh, they've been working over and above what uh, I'm sure they, they initially hired on for. Um, and, uh, you, know, I, you know, we just can't say enough about them. The, the day that uh, 7th Street failed, we also had a, a, a failure in, on Washington Street in front of Shopco, and we also had a failure on Oriana Drive. Or it didn't turn Oriana, out to be a failure? Not, not drive, Oriana oh. Preserve. Oh, okay, Oriana Preserve. Uh, and then over the weekend, I think we had one on Spruce Street. Uh, so they, you know, the you know the important thing is those people who, who are on let run need to leave, leave their water run until the, you know, until the city uh, allows them to or, or says that they can not do it because there is frost in the ground. Uh, 
there's snow on top of the ground, more snow now than there was yesterday, and and uh, so it's uh, winter hasn't you know released her grip yet, and it's going to be a while before they release the grip on on the in the subsurface pipes. So that's all I have, City Manager. Any, anything? Any comments? Thank you, Your Honor. Just a few. Um, I also want to thank the Commission for recognizing the extraordinary effort of the folks out on the front line uh, here in Marquette and, and, of course, throughout the Upper Peninsula. You know, everybody who's been laboring uh, earlier in 50 degree below weather to try to respond to, to broken infrastructure and now in the very fragile season we find ourselves in where uh, it's 50 degrees above or it's zero or it's uh, a warm sunny day so the pipes choose to crack or it's a cold freezing day so the pipes choose to crack. We're not getting break uh, from the weather and uh, there are a lot of tired guys who are out there uh, working to make sure that we're keeping all the services running and it's good to know that from the top down uh, they're getting the recognition that they're due so we appreciate that. Uh, of course, along with that, it means that it's it's very challenging to plan for certain operations of the city. Uh, we heard one of the residents this evening speaking about let run and how does it, how do those orders work and uh, if there are repeat incidents, how how can somebody go about disputing that or or verifying that what they're being charged for is what they deserve? And again, if there are any questions like that in the community, we'd encourage people to come out. Uh, to the city hall, come down to city manager's office as a starting point if they uh, uh, don't don't know any other process to pursue, and we'll be glad to get them hooked up uh, with the right utilities or with the the right um, process for discussing their billing. Uh, also, of course, that means the longer winters around, things like winter parking bans, uh, opening streets, closing streets, where we're going to haul, haul uh, even as you saw, uh, not just with the city organization, but whether school stays open or not. Uh, organizations are now on, on a very unpredictable posture, responding to the weather as it comes along. And I know that can be frustrating for a lot of people, particularly after the long winter that we've had already. But we just ask them to stay patient. We'll get through it. I promise there will be sunny days. Uh, coming in, in just a few weeks, and uh, as that snow melts and we get back to normal, we'll get a chance to kind of catch our breath and move forward. Uh, on that on that note, there are just a couple things that uh, I've heard also this evening regarding the Local Development Finance Authority, uh, what we're doing for future planning, strategic planning, economic development planning, smart zones, uh, next Michigan zones. We're hopeful to get a lot of that information out. Uh, shortly so that people don't have to connect the dots themselves, that we can help get the information that they need uh, to understand it a little better. It's a great news story from our perspective because it means we're going to be able to keep a lot more resources local that we can use to develop the community into what we want it to be, and we can do that without raising taxes. And so we're excited about it, but uh, we understand we need to help get everybody else there too, and we'll, we'll try to uh, keep getting that information out uh, to help that dialogue. And then finally, just a reminder to everybody, it's Good Friday, this this Friday. Uh, government offices will be closed, uh, so we have a short week. So if you're planning your business with the city, uh, please uh, come in and see us by close of business Thursday because uh, the next available chance will be Monday morning bright and early. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, City Manager. Uh, anything further? Nothing further? Then we're adjourned. Yeah.